This documentary explores drug abuse within sports and specifically athletics. Athletics has been around from 776 BC and was included in the Greek Olympic Games. Authors have described performance enhancing drug use in athletics since the ancient Greek times, where they used substances like hallucinogenic mushrooms as means to enhance their performance. Drug abuse has been a major problem within college athletes as an estimated 28% of college athletes have used cannabis over the past year. Recreational drugs are also fairly common, especially with university or college students. Alongside this, stimulants are used by an estimated 3% of college students, which help to reduce the feeling of fatigue. The number of athletes testing positive for stimulants has increased by three times in the past few years. Performance enhancing drugs have been used by many famous athletes. This might encourage younger athletes slash teens to turn to these substances to boost their performance. We can avoid this by educating young athletes and discussing the consequences of drug abuse to help them stay clear. The common performance enhancing drugs are creatine, anabolic steroids, amphetamines and other stimulants. Creatine is found within the body, however can also be sold as an alter over the counter drug. It helps to improve performance during high intensity bursts of activity and also builds muscle mass. Anabolic steroids are synthetic versions of the hormone testosterone which helps to build muscle and increase strength. Amphetamines are used mainly by teens which they believe will increase alertness and improve endurance. Amphetamines took off in the mid 1990s where soldiers used them as moral morale boosters during the war after they then made their way into sport. Athletes may feel inclined to use the, these drugs if they, have, if they have been going through body insecurities or are performing poorly or simply to perform better and gain a competitive edge. These reasons can often lead to mental health concerns. Although they need to be mentally strong on the playing field, their athletes also face pressures, demands and defeat, which can also lead to mental health conditions. Performance enhancing drugs often result in athletes having a sudden weight gain or loss, increase in performance. However, the athlete might begin to withdraw from social activities and behave more secretive. In 1967, the International Olympic Committee FOC, established a medical commission in response to an increase in the usage of performance enhancing substances. During the 20th century, less advanced technology was available resulting in there being a limit on the knowledge available to psychologists and doctors. This means that they were less experienced in treating athletes who suffer from mental health conditions. A large-scale review of 52 studies that included more than 13,000 athletes from 71 sports published in the British Journal of Medicine found that mental illness affects an estimated 33% of athletes per year. However, many athletes find it difficult to seek help for their mental illnesses because they may not rec recognise them as mental illnesses or because they are concerned about what their friends and family might think. According to the journal's author, Coaches are important, play an important role in supporting the elite athletes in obtaining treatments for mental illnesses. However, many of these coaches turn a blind eye to an athlete's struggles because they are more concerned about their performance. There are many famous athletes who have tested a positive for using performance enhancing drugs. On August 22, 2006, the USADA banned sprinter Justin Gatlin from competing for eight years after he tested positive for banned substances for the second time. He was also forced to forfeit his 100 meter world record. Before this, he had been originally banned for two years after testing positive for amphetamines. Gatlin appealed to the WADA, the World Anti-Doping Association, that it was due to ADHD medication which he led, which led the ban to them being lifted early. 
this arbitration panel reduced the ban from eight years to four years at a hearing on December in 2007. Eventually, Gatlin claimed another world record when he beat Christian Coleman at Bolt in his final solo 100 meters race at the 2017 World Championships in London. Another clear example of a famous athlete who tested positive for the use of performance enhancing drugs is Lance Armstrong. After his first Tour de France victory in 1999, he became a public figure and an icon to the American nation and even created a chari charitable cancer organization called LifeStrong. However, all of his seven Tour de France titles, which he accumulated from 1999 to 2005, were revoked after Armstrong's US Postal Service team were exposed for running an elaborate multi-faced doping scheme. Alongside this, the International Olympic Committee nullified his bronze medal which he won at the men's roll time trial during the 2000 Olympics Summer Olympics in Sydney, Australia. Shortly following this, he delivered his first public admission on a televised interview with Oprah Winfrey and did not return the medal for another eight months. A more recent example of an athlete who was caught for the use of drugs is a female American sprinter, Sharkari Richardson. Sharkari Richardson is a 21-year-old athlete who won gold at the Olympic trials in Oregon in June earlier this year and then ran before this she ran the sixth fastest time in history. She received a one-month ban after testing positive for marijuana and is set to miss the Tokyo Olympic Games. The trials were a week after the death of her biological mother and Richardson explained that the cannabis use was used as a coping mechanism. She then went on to the NBC's Today shows to say, don't judge me because I am human, I just happen to run a little faster. The USATF said that they will be supporting the sprinter as their critical priorities are to ensure athletes look after their mental health and well-being. Richardson's acceptance and apology should be an important example to many athletes that we can successfully overcome our regrettable decisions despite the costly consequences of this one to her. It is evident that drug abuse is directly linked to an athlete's mental health and it's of great importance that this is understood. Psychiatric help should be sought for when the athlete tests positive for an illegal or performance enhancing drugs as a therapist can help identify whether there is other underlying reasons causing the use of the drug. A coach's communication style has been linked to doping and drug abuse within sport. This may be amongst the many reasons as to why an athlete might consider the use of enhanced performing drugs. Sneem Manis, in 2017, utilised a perspective survey designed to examine how coach communication style predicted doping variables amongst 166 Greek athletes. The findings indicate that if an athlete had a negative perception of coach autonomy, then this could trigger intention to dope, as they might believe it will help keep winning in proportion. In contrast to this, an athlete's perception of thwarting coaching were positive, positively indirect predictors of continued doping through psychological frustration, moral disengagement, and even the adornment of cheating. Previously, Sunina misconducted an interview study in 2015 of Australian and Greek coaches and found out that coaches actually aspired to influence an athlete's doping-related decisions, but they lacked the efficiency and the knowledge to articulate the means by which they can facilitate the fight against drug abuse. An intervention to this problem could be the development of anti-doping educational programs for coaches. These programs will help train coaches to be more supportive rather than engaging in thwarting behaviours. An athlete might not always intentionally engage in doping. It is possible for an athlete to risk the chance of inadvertent doping by taking an unknown substance due to lack of anti-doping knowledge. Montre Sanchez and Zabala's 2013 review identified that athletes lack anti-doping knowledge, specifically around dietary supplements. Increasing such knowledge, is an such knowledge is an effective way in reducing inadvertent doping. This reinforces the idea that an athlete's mental health and well-being is directly affected by their coach's communication style and, if not focused on, can lead to major substance abuse. However, 
It is important that both coaches and athletes are educated and gain the knowledge they need to avoid intentional and inadvertent doping.